Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, whatever name you want to call her. Here today, Kevin, Elite Heat, we're going to go over just why she's worth, however much she's getting paid now by Tony Khan, or maybe why she isn't. Who knows? We'll get into that. Uh, AW Big Business in Boston's coming up in about a month. That's like AW's big thing now. We figure it'd be pretty timely. Do a little Sasha Banks, Mercedes discussion, Kevin. So firstly, how you doing, pal? I'm great, pal. Yeah, it, it is timely, pal. So Sasha Banks is one of the best women's wrestlers of all time. I don't know where. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about at the end exactly where she ranks. But there's no doubt she has etched her own spot in, in history as one of the greatest. Now, she's been prominent for what? How long now? Like a decade nearly? So she came up in 2015. And then there was a whole NXT thing she was doing 2014-15. Where like she had that match with Bailey in Brooklyn. The Iron Women match. Was that Brooklyn? Was that the one in Brooklyn or was that... No, there was a match in Brooklyn in 2015 that was like the OMG, this is like the best women's match of all time match with Bailey, and then two months later they did an Iron Woman match and went 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, so yeah, the match in Brooklyn, that's the one I think is probably her legacy at this point, which we'll get to at the end, but yeah, I don't know, she just, she's done so many great things, but overall, like, how do you feel about her? I'd say oh, it's it's tricky, right, because... I still not hold it against her. That's not the right word, but I, I still view her a, a bit differently to someone like a Becky Lynch or uh, like a Charlotte Flair or, or even like a Bailey, for instance, because on the main roster, I don't think she's ever had like really like that run. Like as we'll get to, I mean, her 2020 with Bailey was great. She made a event at WrestleMania 37 versus Bel Air. Uh, she's done, obviously there's this NXT stuff, which we're going to discuss in a minute. And then she was involved in some four horsewomen business in 2016 and what have you. But on the whole, I don't think she ever had like that defining like title run or just you know that reign or anything like that to me. Uh, but she's done so much really well uh, as we'll get to and as we'll discuss. Um, she's definitely carved out her own legacy in wrestling, which right away is a big you know tick and a big testament to her because a lot of stars, a lot of performers across the world who get into this, we don't know who the hell they are. Sasha Banks has a very clear, very carved out legacy in the business already let alone what she's going to do in aw so yeah my overall feeling general stance um i'd say i'm a fan i'm not some just like big oh my god sasha yes oh my god when i heard the me the mumblings that big business was happening I, I wasn't running up and down the street with a sasha banks flag pal and sasha banks underwear i wasn't that near like that pal um but yeah you know, it's it, it's good for business sasha banks is objectively good for business so that's my general like initial stance. What about you, pal? But you didn't make the near. You're not gonna make the near day long flight from Australia to Boston and to be there in the garden, pal, to watch Mercedes Monet make her big debut at AEW. Um. Well, I wouldn't want to be in in the TD Garden for other reasons, but uh, yeah, pal. I'm not not considering the day long flight to the states for that, pal. But nevertheless, what do you think, pal? Yeah, I think Sasha's great. And, and as far as like her current position in the wrestling world. Yeah, I think there's a, a bit of a debate there. I think there's a portion of the wrestling fan base and the wrestling media that will argue that she's like one of the five or six most important figures in wrestling. I think there's people that would have that conversation. And then there's other people that just dismiss her and it's like, ah, she does nothing, brings no value. I, I think she falls somewhere in the middle, which I don't think she's really talked about in that light. Like, people don't generally, I feel like, at least, don't generally talk about her and say, ah, oh, she's just great. Like, one of the great, like, what, what was the phrase that Punk used in the pipe bomb? Spoke on the wheel? She's one of yeah. the great spokes on the wheel, pal. Yeah. She's important, but in WWE's eyes, she was always like, okay, it's Charlotte, Becky, and then Sasha. And, you know, even Alexa Bliss was, like, above her for a good amount yeah. of time, and she was always like above Bailey, and like Bailey's like maybe her best comparison. But in the wrestling world now, we've seen her have this run in New Japan, which dare I say is mediocre. Is that I don't know if that's that's harsh. Not not a great run in New Japan. Yeah. A lot of people were thinking, okay, she can kind of help out, maybe not obviously not replace what Kenny Omega brought to New Japan, but help supplement what they yeah. weren't getting from an American audience. And that just wasn't the case. If you look at the social media numbers, like her matches and her moments in New Japan, dwindling views, not, not a lot of traction. But now she's got this renewed hype about her, and she's kind of been talked about a lot more now that she's a free agent. 
she was there in London and all in. So it was like, okay, she's going to be at AEW or could this be a negotiation tactic? Is she trying to get more money from Nick Khan? We don't know. Uh, it seems like it's all but confirmed now that she's going to be in AEW. So in the wrestling world right now, I just think, I, I, I think that, I don't know. I don't want to say that, the, that her time is kind of come and gone because we don't know what her AEW run is going to be. But I think we're more on that side of the spectrum. Mm. I think her better days might be behind her. Well, you touch on the New Japan run, which I know some people will say, and this would be like a minority saying that that was like a like really good. It was objectively speaking, it was it was fine, right? It wasn't breaking social media. It wasn't you know setting the wrestling world ablaze how great it was. It wasn't terrible either. I think people who were saying it was like amazing, because I know there will be probably a couple of listeners who say it was fantastic. You're lying through your teeth. It wasn't. It was, it was, you know, a good match there. There's some, some good stuff from Kyrie. So, like, there was bits of it that was good, but it wasn't like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I've got to tune in, like, the WrestleMania 40 press conference, for instance. That's right. like, OMG, must say, oh, my God, yes, wrestling. The Sasha stuff with Mercedes, and it, it was fine. Anyway, uh, with that regards to her sort of position, I'll, I'll say one more thing. Uh, to me, now, this, you know, I don't know if you agree. I think I touched on this before we got on air with this, but... To me, I view her in a similar mold, not to the same degree exactly, but a similar sort of mold in the female space to what CM Punk was in the men's space, in that she has had a fleeting, like, great run. She's had some amazing moments. She's a really diehard, really vocal, devoted fan base who fly her flag no matter what, as is the case with Punk. Um, She's done some great stuff from a, a pure, like, wrestler's point of view, as far as, like, on the microphone, in the ring, even on commentary, pal. Um, Sasha's phenomenal, like, and really good at all that sort of stuff. But there's always creative differences. WWE, Vince McMahon especially, always had someone else who was viewed higher in the hierarchy. For Sasha, that was always Charlotte Flair. It was always Charlotte who was above in the hierarchy. And for Punk, it was always Cena. You know, you always have, like, a poster boy who's above them. And that's how I view it. And that's how I view it. I, I think Sasha's, as we've discussed, had a, a fantastic you know, career for what she's done. Uh, but there's always been not someone above in the totem pole, but really, yeah, someone above in the totem pole who creative, Vince, someone always views higher than her, um, just in her standing in the company, which is that fair to her? We'll discuss that over the next like half an hour or so, we'll say. Uh, but yeah, Kevin, that being said, I'll ask you now and we'll transition. Your favorite sort of Sasha moment match whatever like what's the sort of the thing you think of with sasha hmm um wow that's interesting probably her stuff with bailey her feud with bailey in nxt is probably my favorite match or moment i, I could go back and like those are matches i can go back and rewatch. And i know like like steve Austin, i think did like a watch along with both of them on his podcast which was pretty cool um but yeah that's like probably the one big thing that jumps out to mind uh, some of the pandemic era stuff she did was pretty cool with Bailey. Uh, I I'm I'm trying to think like maybe when she won the title from Charlotte. I don't remember if that was Hell in a Cell 2016 or if that was on Raw. Mm-hmm. That was a big moment. I remember being popping really hard for that. Um, what I what I want to talk about though, which is probably a lot of people's favorite moment, is WrestleMania 37. Yes. And and I want to speak on that in in long form as someone who was there. I was in the building for that WrestleMania. Now that match and that moment is looked at as like, okay, important, you know, for obvious reasons. Two women of color main eventing WrestleMania. We had already saw women main event WrestleMania two years prior. And both of those moments have been watered down, in in a sense. WrestleMania 35, that was watered down by Charlotte Flair just being plugged in. Here's Ric Flair's daughter, pal. People know who she is because of her father. So we need to have her because she's more famous than Becky Lynch. So have that. That watered down that main event. If that, that had been just Becky versus Ronda, if it was the two best women going at it, that's a main event worthy match. Fine, you know, I'll put my hands up. I'll say main event worthy match. As a triple threat, that's a middle of the card match. I'm sorry. Um, this match, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Oh, we're going to main event it because it's two women of color. Just to do it. And people were walking out. You know, like literally I, I was watching people walk out all all colors, all sizes. Everybody was people were walking out. It, it, it didn't matter. You know, people weren't mad because oh, I was two women of color. Let me leave. Like they were just like, this match sucks. It's boring. You know, yeah. that was the overall, not the overall, but that was a sentiment from those people that walked out. 
Um, it was a special moment. You know, the women were crying. It was a beautiful moment. I want to take away from that. I, I just think if something you want to do something like that, a big moment. I think it's got to feel more organic. Yeah. That that was a problem with that. It didn't. It felt forced. The storyline going in was not very good, as we've talked about. We don't need to rehash that. But for example, Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargill. They had a stare down at St. Petersburg at the Royal Rumble. That as a WrestleMania main event, that's like okay, these are two stars, these are two women, two wrestlers. You put all the agenda stuff aside. These are two wrestlers that deserve to be in the main event. Let, let's be honest, bro. WrestleMania 37, the main event of night one was Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. That that was the match that I think should have main evented. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think that. Now, with that being said, though, still, she holds that moment. She's still, give, she's still one half of the first uh, woman of color to main event at WrestleMania. And that's an, an amazing moment. Very emotional and it's probably the one that she's going to hang her hat on when she's all said and done from wrestling. So, I don't know. I just wanted to touch on that. Because I really don't have, like, a favorite Sasha Banks moment. Like, I'm not, I'm not really into Sasha Banks myself. Like, I'm not really mm-hmm. a huge yeah. fan of hers. I don't particularly, like, she's just there for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm similar. I would say with the 37 thing, I mean, my video archives on the JT channel, all those videos are still up. Me, at the time, giving my opinion on that. We, we won't just go over the full storyline, but the, the whole thing going in with Sasha, with Bianca Belair, it was a cold build. It, 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 there was no buzz there. It was, I'm the EST, I'm the boss. Oh, we're going to wrestle as a tag team. Oh, and then they got to WrestleMania. And it's like, you know, obviously they end up going with that main event because that one has, I guess, you could say, you know, cultural significance and, you know, what that sort of means from a representation point of view, all that. You know, it made a good moment aesthetically with that, with them main eventing, sure. But realistically, Drew McIntyre, that was his year. Like, the previous year and a bit was him. So, is what it is. That being said, for me, when I think Sasha Banks, her moment, you touched on this, that 2015 NXT stuff with Bailey, uh, having lived and watched 2015 NXT at the time, that, that was NXT. To me, Sami Zayn's 2014 and his, like, rode the NXT title at our revolution when he beat Neville, that as well as Sasha and Bailey in 2015, that made NXT. It was, I wasn't desperate to watch NXT to watch Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe. They weren't doing much that was that captivating. To me, it was Sasha and Bailey doing the stuff in 2015 that was really like, that made you want to tune into NXTs. That was the thing that made you want to really watch. It wasn't watching Mojo Rawley versus who, Enzo Amore, pal. It was watching that. Um, that was what got you going. And the year before, it was Sami Zayn losing all the big matches and then beating Neville Powell in front of Full Sail University and everyone screaming and then the, the Owen stuff. There was that. But yeah, to me, that Sasha stuff with Bailey is like that first match in Brooklyn is like iconic. It went 20 minutes and I, you can still make very valid cases the best women's match ever. And that, you know, nothing's objectively gotten better than that. You can make the case. And we'll discuss this in a minute. But. Yeah, then they do the, the Iron Woman match, pal. You've got, you know, they have flowers at the end. Paul Vex out there. 30 minutes, pal. Uh, you know, they're, they're about to go to overtime and then they make the... It was just... That, that was great. But yeah, to me, her defining match, her moment is the 2015 Bailey stuff. Um, nothing topped that from like a buzz and like a like how it was done. Like, like that, that had some heat to it. That was like the best thing in NXT at the time. Yeah, that, that's what I'd say, pal. Absolutely. So yeah. let's talk about her because you mentioned she has a CM Punk like fan base that's mm-hmm. very passionate, pal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you feel like that that she warrants that passionate fan base? Oh, bad. <laughs> that's like a journalistic, like hard hitting, blistering question. Um, I can answer it like a politician and wave around it, but I'll say this: Does she justify the fan base? I'll ask you. I'll turn it back. What has she done to really warrant it sort of thing? Like, what would you say is her thing that justifies a cult-like diehard fan base? Is it the combination of the fact that she was hardly done by by Vince McMahon? Is the fact that she's a female as well on top of that? Is it the fact that she's into acting or she's related to Snoop Dogg? Is that a part of it as well? Like, is it a mixture of all the above? Um, Is it because a bunch of fans think she's hot pal? And they want to, you know, try and, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's a combination of all these things. Uh, is it justified? I mean, I can only speak from my personal opinion. I think she's a good talent, but I'm not just like, oh, my God, yes, Sasha, my queen, pal. I need Sasha Banks posters, Sasha Banks pillows, pal. Uh, that's not – no. Um, so, to me, do I think it's justified? Personally, no. Uh, I don't think a cult-like fan base is justified for really in any wrestler, to be honest. That's just my view on wrestling. I agree. I'm just like, this, this is just – uh, this is some adult woman who her occupation is a wrestler. Right. And, you know, she's into movies and acting and she was in The Mandalorian, pal, and all this other stuff. But to me, how I view life, it's like uh, her occupation is a wrestler. So I don't feel it's justified, but I understand for people who need a role model, need someone to aspire to, really idolize someone. I get it. You know, Sasha Banks, fair enough. I'm not faulting anyone for that. Just personally, not for me, pal. Um, what do you think? What do you stand on this whole thing? Do you... You didn't really get behind Sasha in the fan fairs, justified, pal. Well, I think, like, like what makes her a star is the fact that she is, she reaches a portion of the audience that WWE never has really catered to, I would say. I think that's what it is. If I had to put my finger on the pulse of why she has this fan base, her character is the legit boss. That's like the PG version of her, like basically being a boss ass bitch, which is like a thing in culture, I guess. Like, you know, I don't really want to speak on this too much, but you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm what I'm talking about, you know. She hits a portion of the culture that WWE, like I said, never really reached with any other characters. Yes, we've had women that look like Sasha Banks that have been in WWE prior. But they were not presented the way that she is presented a whole different way it's a whole different dynamic that is really difficult to speak on but she kind of yeah. laid the groundwork for a character like bianca belair to exist and presumably what jay cargill will be and sasha banks is like what brandy rhodes wished that she could have been in AEW. that's what sasha banks just is you know mm-hmm. she just is yeah. that and that resonates with like i said this underserved portion of the audience it resonates with them so well because it's a good representation of what they look like you know we've seen goofy representations you know we've Mm -hmm. seen the the you know the the goofiness that they did and the wwe did in like the mid 2000s where the racially motivated characters were just at an all-time high Mm. you know so now to see it on the other side where it's a good representation it, it she has a character that people really like people dress up as her for halloween you know she has cool hair and cool uh ring gear and her entrance music is awesome you know she had the big entrance with snoop dogg snoop dogg is her cousin um Mm -hmm. yeah she's well connected in that in that sense um i i think it's it's a lot of those things she just i feel like that's what it is but go ahead well, and as you touch on, like, I, from my personal experience growing up watching wrestling and seeing either, I mean, women of color pre- representation and whatever, my, my, like, the only thing I can think of from this is like the 2011, 2012, 2013 time period is Naomi and Cameron as the Funkadactyls dancing with pom poms next to Brodus Clay. Like, that's, that's the sort of representation we were working with here for a long time. So now Sasha Banks trailblazes that going, Look, you can look like me or look similar, and you're a bad bitch. You know, like you, you can be the top top woman on this show and the top one of the top stars on the show generally. You can come out in these, you know, really glamorous cars. You have these big grand entrances. You can be like like the main star because as you should be, queen, like that sort of thing. You know, and now that's as you say. Now now that's led into Bianca Belair and all the success she's had and is having. It's going to bleed into Jay Cargill. It's going to bleed into the biggest women's main event ever. Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair at wrestlemania probably next year it looks like so that's gonna you know that all laid the foundation getting like sasha banks is a huge piece like how i'll phrase this is sasha banks got us from naomi and cameron and the funkadactyls through until jade and bianca belair right. main eventing at wrestlemania like sasha banks was what it, like connected and enabled that to be a thing because as i say when, when i'm watching wrestlemania 28 pal my well, the female representation was some crappy Marina Menounos, Marina whatever tag team match with Beth Phoenix. There was like a bathroom Garbage. break. Then the Funkadactyls dancing with pom poms next to Brodus Clay. I'm like, what is this? 
And now when probably 2025, we're going to watch Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair in this epic WrestleMania main event. I'm going to be able to show like every one of my friends. They're going to go, oh my God, well, how do I watch that? That's right. insane. Exactly. Like, can, I, can you send me a clip? Can I, can I watch that? Because they're the most legitimate, like phenomenal female athletes, regardless of color generally, that we've seen in wrestling. So yeah, that, that's what Sasha Banks, a big part of her legacy is getting us from one from point A to point B. She's the sort of trailblazer with that, which is you know, one of the big things of her legacy, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the controversies that Sasha Banks has had. So I'll, I'll lead us into this discussion. So, was Sasha Banks justified in her creative differences? Oh, are you gonna are you gonna read the full question or just just say Vince McMahon? No, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna read the full question. Oh um, God! With a uh, with an addict. In a okay, let me let me let me start over. Was Sasha yeah. Banks justified in her creative differences with an addict, a seventy year old seventy eight year old addict, in Vince yeah. in Vincent Kennedy McMahon, pal? I, I I'll just answer this because I, I love talking about the dirt, pal. So I like you know I love talking about the dirt in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Sasha Banks has had uh, not one but two high profile just walkouts essentially from WWE. The first being after WrestleMania 35, and all that went down. I don't really remember. Did they lose to the Iconics? Was that it? Was Sasha Banks yes. the tag team champions? They lost to the Iconics and they cried. Yeah, they brought the women's tag titles in in that February. Uh, Sasha and Bailey won them in the chamber. And the thinking was that they'd go into WrestleMania, have like a big match. It's going to really mean a lot. Ended up being like five hours into like a seven-hour WrestleMania. No one cared. The Iconics just beat them for no reason. And Sasha and was like, what the, what the F was that? What was that? And then there was this big creative drama. I remember... Um, JD from New York covered this. This is probably his best work. I think he's done as a podcaster. He covered this whole thing and provided like full news and all, all like the inside and the backstage rumors. And yeah, it was basically Sasha Banks created differences and she just walked out. She was like, what the F was that? I, I, you don't treat me seriously. You don't take these titles at all seriously. You've just, you've walked back on what you told me two months ago. That these belts have mean something. F you, I'm out. So yeah. basically. So then, then she comes back whatever it was like it was like going back the night the night after SummerSlam, the raw after SummerSlam, she came out and then attacked becky lynch and they did a feud right so i i do think hmm, i i think there's there's two sides to this coin right there's the cm punks of the of the world and there's the mrs of the world right you know the cm punk Oh, I, I'm not gonna. I, I, I'm not gonna main event over The Rock. And Vince is like, no, The Rock is the biggest movie star in the world. Like, well, I deserve it. Okay. And that's it. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for your input. And then Phil leaves because he couldn't main event over the biggest movie star in the world two years in a row. Where if he had just stayed, he would have main evented like the, like eight WrestleManias in a row. It would have been Roman Reigns versus CM Punk from 2015 to 2021 if if CM Punk had just stayed around. But I, I digress. Yeah. Then there's the Mrs. of the world, where it's like, here, come on, Mike, you're going to be in the main event. You're going to be in a in a commercial for WrestleMania 28. Your your main event is essentially going to be a commercial. We're going to have The Rock there. He's going to rock bottom. John Cena, you're going to get the win, pal. In in one of one of if not the most meaningless WrestleMania main events of all time. But hey, you can still main event WrestleMania. And he's like, yeah, I'll take whatever I can get. Then the next year, it's like, hey, bro, you're not even on the on the WrestleMania card, or you're in the pre-show. Sorry, man. I know you main evented last year, and it's like, yeah, whatever. I'll take my, my, I'll take my check and go home. So it just depends on the person, right? The kind of person that that you're dealing with, whatever they feel the values are, and whatever they're willing to put up with, you know. And those two people that I mentioned are the most extreme examples on the spectrum. Sasha is in that spectrum more on the CM Punk side. To say that she's warranted, I don't know, because there's a part of me that's like, look, bro, you're famous, you're living out everybody's dream. You're a wrestler, you've got like seven cars, a mansion, all because of what you did in WWE. Okay, Charlotte Flair gets the main event. Okay, Becky Lynch gets the main event. Like, me personally, I'd be happy taking my checks. I, I feel like I'd be happy taking my checks. Yeah. Going on ha- like halfway through the show. Put me on fourth, whatever. I'll lose to Peyton Royce, I don't care. My, my check's still yeah. coming. I'm feeding my family. Like, I, I, me personally, I don't think I would be like, hey, I need to main event WrestleMania every single year. 
And that's mm-hmm. kind of what Sasha wanted. I, I feels like I mean, this can lead us into our next discussion too. She was overshadowed by the other, the other two prominent members of the Four Horsewomen, and Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch, for pretty much her entire career on the main roster, at least. She was just not really taken serious. And the other side of this coin too, she's injury prone. Whenever she did get a big spot, she Dolph Ziggler'd it. She got a concussion. She, t- she separated her shoulder. She 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 made a plastic like I'm just I'm just trying to be honest here. She got injured in New Japan. She sat out like all of 2023 practically. She was injured. Like she's not built like I I not to say it like this, but she's not built like the other three women of the horse of the, the other three of the four horsewomen. She's just not built like them. Like from a physical standpoint, Charlotte Flair mm-hmm. is the daughter of one of the most like incredible athletic specimens wrestling's ever seen. Ric Flair would be doing coke and drinking bottles of liquor with strippers and then would go have a 60 minute match with Ricky Steamboat and then go back and party with strippers and not sleep and just do it all over again. Go to the gym, run an hour on the treadmill, bench in 250 pounds. Like Ric Flair is a genetic freak mm-hmm. in his own right. And Charlotte Flair got that. Bailey is phys- like physically just bigger than Sasha. Mm-hmm. And so is Becky. They just, you know, she's just not built like them. I don't know. So I, I, I would just say this, then you can go. Is it justified? I don't know. I, I don't know if it is or not. And, and to address, I know because one person's definitely in the comments. What do you mean Becky's bigger than Sasha? They're the same size. Becky's more durable. Okay, she's she's injured less. That just is what it is. That's that's what that's what Kevin meant there. Uh, with regards to yeah, a lot to sort of cover on that. Um, firstly, with the creative differences thing, I I agree with you. Uh, with regards to the same punks of the world thing or the, the Miz's, uh, just generally from my personal point of view, um, and this is in wrestling, this, this is like a big thing. And I mean, basketball, the NBA, for instance, it, if you, like, you're not a player who's desperate to, you need, I need to win a championship ring, you get like chastised and vilified. It's like, it's like ring culture in the NBA, for instance. When like, for instance, like Charlotte Hornets, if I was getting paid $25 million to play 60 basketball games a season, run up and down the court, make my shots. You're like you're, you're partying with OF models, pal. You got this like a massive mansion. You get to just play basketball. I, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be desperate to win a, a ring anyway. Like realistically speaking, the human element of this all. Anyway, so that leads me to say this to Sasha Banks. I understand. Like I, I, I'm a fairly empathetic person, pal. I get it from her point of view that the whole thing with, for instance, the WrestleMania 35 walkout. Oh my God, the titles have been brought in, these women's tag belts. All of a sudden, F you, you know, I'm losing the Iconics, pal, Peyton Royce, Billy K, pal. Their gimmick was that they were screeching. Great gimmick, pal, though. They were loud Australians. I, as an Australian myself, I felt no connection to them. I just, I'm like, what are these two? Like, what is this? They're, they're literally, they're on screen screeching and trying to be annoying Australians. Did Vince McMahon think this was a good idea? He probably did. That's why yeah. I did it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that was dumb. Uh, objectively, not a good, not a smart decision. Uh, when it comes to the, the four horsewomen sort of element of this, uh, I guess I'll ask you in a moment the rankings and whatever, because that's always a fun discussion. Uh, but to me, where Sasha Banks sits and all of that, it's really hard because all, all the horsewomen are good in their own regard. They're all different, which is what makes it so hard to rank. It sort of depends what you're going for. Um, to me, Sasha Banks is probably, I think Sasha's the second best of the four, in just my opinion. I, I think Becky's just the best of them. Um, she's proven that over the 10 years she's been around. She's like the most consistent, the most durable. She cuts the best promos. She's the, the most character sort of development and range, or maybe Bailey. But I think Becky's, Becky's done it in the main event more. But Becky's had more big time matches. She's main evented the WrestleMania pal, as you discussed. She's been involved in more big stuff. She's had a bigger title run with her women's title reign. I think Becky's done more for women's wrestling really than the other ones, personally. I think Becky's just one of the all-time greats from the women's sound. I think Becky's the greatest female wrestler, one of, if not ever. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, I have a top 50 all-time pal, as we discussed. But yeah, Charlotte Flair is Charlotte Flair. When she's not on TV, I don't care. Charlotte's been injured for two months. I haven't thought once, oh my God, when's Charlotte coming back? We need a Charlotte match. So that's not really... That doesn't say a lot about Charlotte Flair. That doesn't help her. Um, I dare say if Bailey, Sasha, or um, Becky were out, I'd be thinking, oh, well, I'd at least think, oh, when are they going to come back at least? Like, what's the sort of go? What's the situation? Charlotte, I, I genuinely don't care. 
Like we've seen everything we need to see with Charlotte. We've seen every match. We've seen her. I'm the queen. I deserve this spot. What have you? To me, Charlotte is interests me the least out of the four. But is she the worst? Probably not. I don't think I. It's really hard to assess these. I'm just going to say when it comes to Sasha Banks, because this is a Sasha Banks sort of show. I think she's the second best of the four. Um, I think from a skill set standpoint, she may well have the best skill set. She's a very similar skill set to Becky. Uh, but I think Becky's just had better durability. Becky's just done more. She just has. She hasn't been injured as much as Sasha. She's done more on main event WWE, I guess, level than Sasha Banks has. And yeah, that's that's my opinion, pal. Thoughts? So what I want to say about the, the four horsewomen is, like, in regards to the way people view them, I think it's kind of funny because seemingly... And I know some people in my personal life, I can speak from personal experience. I don't know about overall the wrestling community. Mm-hmm. But I know people that are like, like I worked with this one guy a few years ago that was a big Becky Lynch guy. And his stance was like, I'm a Becky Lynch guy. Nobody else likes Becky Lynch. I feel like I'm the only one that likes her. And then I, know, then I was listening to a podcast the other day. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but a wrestling podcast. And, it, and two of the guys on there were like, we're big Bailey stands. I feel like we're the only Bailey fans out there. When everybody's like into Becky and Charlotte, we like Bailey. She's always been our favorite of the four horse women. Seems like these four women are like really gate kept and like people are really proud to like say, Oh, I'm a Sasha fan. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Becky Lynch fan. Like okay. Like you you have a favorite wrestler. Congrats, bro. Like like that's like if I got on here and I was like, I'm a Ruthless Aggression era fan. I was a Brock Lesnar fan from the old OBW four. I was a Brock guy first before he debuted. Or I, I was an Eddie guy. You know, like, I don't know. It just seems kind of funny the way people approach th- these four girls. Everybody seems to think that they're like, they're special for liking them. Go ahead. That's that's so true. I was, I was going to make a, a Brock Lesnar joke there. I'm not going to proceed with that, what I was going to say. But yeah, like, it, it's so true. You know, like, like this. I'm the only, ba- I, I'm, I'm a Bailey fan. I'm flying a flag for my girl, Bailey, pal. It's like, Bailey doesn't know who you are. Like come yeah. on, like you like know, really? uh, yeah, and just to say, they're like exactly, they don't know who they are, who you are. But to close this point off that I'm making, mm-hmm. they're all four of them have been huge stars at WWE for the mid to late 2010s and into the 2020s. So being a fan of them is not like, it's not it's not like it's not like you're an NBA purist and you're like a a big uh, Jamal Crawford guy. Like that's different, you know. Jamal Crawford doesn't have a huge fan base. All four of these girls are mainstream, like pretty mainstream. Like they all have mainstream appeal. Yeah. Charlotte did the ESPN thing. Becky had the feud with Ronda. Sasha's in the Mandalorian. Bailey's mm. just been like the Seth Rollins of it all. She's on TV every single week. The most consistent, hardest worker of all four of them. Yeah. The one that flies under the radar. Like they're all big stars. Like it's not like they all have super fans that are dedicated. You know. Um. And then as far as my rankings of the four. I, I would say Becky, I agree with you. I think Becky is the best. Uh, I think objectively speaking, if we're talking skill wise, I do think Charlotte's probably second. Mm-hmm. Like she just had she's the most gifted in ring women's wrestler I think we've ever had. You know, she she didn't get any of the character or promo stuff that her father had. But she got every bit of his ring ability and then some. She's phenomenal. Like some of the greatest like in ring women's matches, Charlotte probably she's probably had at least like five out of the top ten. You know, she's she's just been involved in so many great matches and she's such a good storyteller and she gets it from that standpoint. Um then I I would probably put Sasha third and then Bailey at four. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sasha I think in ring, I don't think she's that great, that spectacular in the ring. She does have good promos, does have good character work. I, I just I don't think she's as good as Becky and Charlotte in the ring. And even mm-hmm. Bailey to a to a to a degree, like Bailey might even be a better ring worker than her. But Sasha has the presentation, theme music, the entrance, the character work. Her character works right up there. She's as good, if not better, than Becky from a character standpoint. She just mm-hmm. didn't get a chance to flex it on the main event scene the way that Bailey, I mean, the way that Becky Lynch has. Yep. So I don't know. Maybe we'll see some of that stuff in AEW. Maybe she'll bring some good character and good presentation that AEW desperately needs right now and that leads us in to this conversation uh i'll just ask it straight up can sasha banks or mercedes monet be the face of aw and you might hear that and go i mean the face of aw that's a bit dramatic well but then the follow-up is well in 2024 who is the face of aw 44 right. year old samoa joe 
right. as the world champion. You know, Swerve Strickland's going to be, or at least he's on trajectory to be the, the world champion once he probably beats, well, either Joe or like a transitional champion, Hangman Page. Yes, MJF, I mean, he's might be off TV for another five months. We don't know. Right. So there's that. Adam Cole and the Devil Power. Is it Adam Copeland? Is it like Sting's retiring? Um, I'm trying to think here, like Christian Cage. Like, um, you know, Jericho. Who, who else? Sorry, Jericho and his NDAs. Yeah. So Sasha Banks. Can Sasha Banks be the face of AW now? Well, it's good that you brought up who is the current face of AEW. So let's look through it, right? 2019, the face of AEW was Chris Jericho. Then it kind of transitioned from Jericho to Moxley throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then it went to like, maybe Kenny Omega was the better part, like through the heart of the pandemic in 2021. And then once once Punk debuted, that was it. Punk made his Mm -hmm. debut. Punk was the face. Punk was the face of AEW from the time he debuted until he, he was forced out. Um, and then it was kind of MJF. Like, MJF was there twenty like while Punk was still around, 2023, until he took a break. MJF was yep. the face. And he his face run got kind of tired out. Right? His, just as the face, the franchise guy, seemed to be, you know, some people break, some people, some people can, they can make it, some people can't. Seemed to, he seemed to have broken under the pressure of being the top guy. Um, so, is Sasha Banks going to step in and fill that void that was gone from CM Punk. Tony Khan brought in Edge or Adam Copeland, thinking that he would just slide in and everybody would be like, oh my god, Edge is here, pal. Oh my god. I'm gonna go pack out arenas, pal. I'm gonna go drive to Miami and watch AEW and watch Adam Copeland take on Luchasaurus. It just didn't work out that way with Adam Copeland. I think a lot of people, I guess Tony Khan didn't see it coming, but a lot of people could have seen it coming. Good. Well, and this, speaking of Adam Copeland, just real quick on him before you carry on. I was watching, or just I'm, just, I'm on YouTube generally. I get the recommendation clip from Collision from the other day. Adam Copeland says that he is nowhere near done with Christian Cage. Like, it was just a whole, it was like Adam Copeland promo. And I had a legitimate feeling, I'm not being overdramatic, of disgust. I thought, get that away from me. I don't want to say that. I am not interested I don't care to see Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage. Part three, part four, I don't want to see that. So, yeah, that, that's where the Adam Copeland face the AW things at. I'm literally seeing Adam Copeland's collision segments pop up my recommended, going, get that away from me. I want no part of that. So, doing a great job on the, the Adam Copeland side of things. But carry on. Sasha Banks, can she be the face of AW? Well, I think it's sink or swim with, with Sasha Banks as it pertains to her and or Mercedes Monet as it pertains to her running AEW. It's sink or swim. She's either going to come in and be the face and be that void that CM Punk left, and she's going to be the top star in the company that people are going to see, people are buying merchandise of, or she's going to come in, have this big moment in Boston, and then in three weeks, she's going to be lost in the shuffle, just lost in the toy box. I I really don't think there's an in-between. I I don't think her run can go like how Adam Copeland, how Adam Copeland, Copeland's run is going, where at least like, okay, it's Adam Copeland. He's doing some cool stuff. Yeah, he's living out his creative dreams and freedoms and all that. Good for him. But I, I just think we're, we're, it's, it's very, it's very risky per se. Like we're dangerously close to a, in six weeks, seeing like Mercedes Monet versus, I don't even know, like Red Velvet, uh, opening mm-hmm. collision, or like in a dark match for a pay per view. I, I just, I don't know. Okay. It, it, it could go one of two ways. Yeah, it's. And that's and that's the the reality of it because what I mean I I want to say what I mean yourself most fans would want to say Sasha or Mercedes comes in it's like it's like her career best run is the culmination of all these things she's put together from a character standpoint an in ring standpoint promos entrance it all comes together into one there's good creative it makes sense every week she's cutting these great promos. The, the storylines are really good and you can viably have her main event aw pay-per-views because the other alternatives to main events it's like yeah i mean we can get swerve versus samoa joe or hangman and a triple threat cool but i mean mercedes monet my god that promo she cut last week on dynamite that match this storyline versus whoever oh my god that, that, that should main event why not 
you know, it's more interesting than in, from a North American mainstream standpoint than what Okada might do coming in saying, I'm the rainmaker, pal. Let's have a great match. I wrestled in Japan for 15 years. Like, you know, Mercedes Monet has so much potential there. I just hope it doesn't become the, uh, the, 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 the good old TK toy box, pal, where we're watching it in three months. And it's like, okay, opening collision, watching Mercedes Monet versus Ruby Soho. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's Mercedes Monet having a match with Chris Atlander. Tony, why is this happening? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Mercedes Monet oh, having a match. Okay. I guess she's facing Tony Storm. This, this, this is good. This has potential. Oh, but there's no real story. It's just still happening. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, commercial break. Oh, match is over. Okay. Next. Next segment. Next segment. Where's Moxley? Where's Moxley? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But there's, yeah, it's single swim. This is like, you know, go big or go home. This is home run or strike out for Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, and Tony Khan from a creative point of view. Tony Khan cannot fumble the bag here. This would be like, this is really, and like, I'm not being over dramatic with this. You have obviously Adam Copeland comes in. He's supposed to be your answer to Phil Brooks and everything CM Punk meant for AW is like the face figure, the big name. That, that was as they, Adam Copeland just, he's just doggy paddling around the water. He's not really making any big splashes. He's not making any big noise. It's not like everyone's watching, whatever. Adam Copeland's just doggy paddling around in AW. Oh, Christian Cage. Christian Cage. Let's do backstroke together, pal. That's Adam Copeland. Mercedes Monet needs to be a splash, impact, a, a big time player. And if that can't be executed upon, if that can't be what we hope it to be, if that can't be as good as we want it to be, then Tony Khan, as he's making these statements in press going, AW is the best it's ever been right now. Well, then it's that'd be more proof. You're lying through your teeth, Tony. You need to deliver, execute on things like this, pal. So I say all this to say, big business in Boston coming up. It's about a month away, pal. What, what do you think, pal? So obviously, they're going to sell out the arena, pal, probably, or at least get as many seats sold as possible. It's just like CM Punk's first dance in Chicago, minus about three quarters of the viewers from a TV point of view. Kidding. What do you think? What do you think? Where, 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 like how, how do you think this is going to go? How much buzz is this going to generate? I want your opinions here. Predict this for us. Build it up. Hype it up, pal. Talk to me. But well, this is Mercedes Monet's moment to prove Vince McMahon, Triple H, and Nick Khan wrong about her. Mm -hmm. for, for like throughout her, her creative differences. And then in 2022, when she left again, and when she was tag teaming with Naomi, and WWE released that nasty, scathing report like, oh, she threw her championship at John Laurinaitis' face and walked out. I'm being dramatic here, but... And walked yeah. out. Like, it was crazy. Michael Cole and Corey Graves were like, yeah, Sasha Banks had creative differences and left. And she's gone. It was unlike anything we've ever seen before. It was like a character assassination. Uh, like, literally, bro, we, we've seen other wrestlers walk out. Well, I guess this was similar to when Stone Cold just decimated Steve Austin after he beat his wife and then left in, in 2002. And, like, disappointed fans. We had Vince and The Rock just go crazy in these promos it was kind of like that not as not as that not to that degree not to that level mm -hmm. yeah. hey i know you're giving me those eyes pal but hey I, I made a video about it if you want to know more about steve also's personal life it's on the wrestling uncovered channel pal this is what we do out here pal so i digress enough about steve austin <laughs> we, we we saw that come out with sasha banks and all those stories and in both the times where she left the the notion i assume the notion was hey i want more money Hey, I want to be treated better. I want to be booked better. I want the main event treatment. I want to be on the level I deserve to be. Then negotiations presumably begun when she became a free agent last year with uh, Triple H and Nick Khan. And they were like, or she was like, hey, I want to be paid like Charlotte Flair. I want to be paid like Becky, Ronda. And Nick Khan was like, ha ha, you hear that, Paul? Ha, she thinks she deserves that kind of money. So I don't know. She, this is her chance to prove them wrong. And prove that she can be the face of a company. And prove that she can do what CM Punk did. And can main event and can draw huge gates. There's just, there's so many X factors here. If she goes into Boston in the TD Garden and picks up a microphone. And it's just like, you see Paul? I can stand on my own two legs. It, it's over. Put it, put, it, put, it, put it to bed. It's done. You know? Yeah, like that, that, that would kill the run before it even begins. You know, then you have Bleach Report. It's a, like Bleach, Bleach Report. Oh my God, Sasha mentioned Triple H. 
it's the same song and dance that we've seen for five years with AEW now. Every yeah. one of their mother has mentioned Triple H. Cody's done it. You know, Punk's done it. Hangman Page, The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Tony mm. Storm. They've all mentioned Triple H and or WWE or Vince. Yeah. We need to see more. We need to see greatness. We need to see this greatness that she feels that she's worth. You know, if Tony Khan gave her whatever much money that he gave her for her to come in and just say, hey, bro, Paul, I can stand, I can stand on my two legs. And, you know, we need to see something yeah. different. We need to see something better. We need to see something captivating. We need a good storyline. We need a big double or nothing match being set up that night, you know, in Boston. Like, you got to have somebody. I don't know who, just fantasy booking for a moment. You have Tony Storm, just using her as an example. Tony Storm comes out and, like, they, they do this, like, they presented like a like a shoot angle. Tony Storm like jumps the rail and just beats Sasha Banks' ass. And you got the, the X being thrown up. And like her big moment, her big first dance gets ruined. Something like yeah. that to make people want to watch again next week. Like yeah. if like if she just comes out, it's like, oh my god, I'm here in Boston. Thanks, guys. Tears in my eyes. Oh my god. Like what yeah. what is what is there to get me watching going forward? Exactly. No, exactly. Couldn't agree more. And I'll say this, which I guess will lead us into our sort of closing point on Sasha. I'm going to say this now. And the whole point of this statement is, please prove me wrong. Prove me otherwise. I think Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, going to AEW is a dumb career move. I think if you look at the last four or five years of wrestlers who've gone to AEW, the, the return there isn't great. Like, Swerve Strickland didn't come in nearly at the same star power as Sasha Banks. Is. Swerve came in, like, down here, and now he's going like that. Most of the wrestlers have come in up here have either gone down or they've sort of stagnated and fluctuated. So I don't, I don't understand, especially from the mercedes Monet point of view, Sasha Banks, you go to WWE right now. SmackDown, the big women's situation, Bailey, her, like, legit real-life best friend, is going to rampage into WrestleMania and take on EO Sky and this whole damage control thing. That's like one of the biggest things on SmackDown. Raw, you've got Rhea Ripley in her prime. You've got Becky Lynch, who's doing some of the best work of her career. On top of all of it, you've got Jade Cargill coming in. Bianca Belair's still around in a meaningful capacity. There's, there's like so much there to do in WWE. Plus, you know, the presentation's going to be better. You know what to expect. Paul Levesque's booking the show. You've got your big WrestleManias. You know, the WWE doing these big deals and they're breaking records left and right pal they're selling out stadium shows in australia selling out stadiums in berlin pal in france like to me i look at it and go and, you, and so you have that but you, you want you want to go over here where there's a track record that you, you're probably not going to be used great like you might be used fine but mercedes monet can't just be used fine she needs to be used great she needs great angles like the one you just mentioned there something really like omg like she's coming out she's crying a whole Boston chanting, you deserve it. We love you, Sasha, yada, yada. She's having an emotional moment. Then she gets like shoot attack or something or whatever. Referees turn up the X's and people are like, what the hell? Oh my God. Like some real, like an angle that gets us wanting to watch week after week after week. So yeah, for now, I think she made a bad career move. If that's just, if she's just going to show up for big business pal and cut a promo. No, right away. I, I get Paul Levesque and Nick Khan probably wanted to pay her like $2 million less than what Tony Khan's paying her. I don't care. She has enough money. Money's not an issue, pal. She can feed her family. So, yeah, I don't get the career choice. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it, pal. If we're watching four months' time, she's wrestling Ruby Soho in the middle of AW Rampage. I'm like, yep. Yep. Jimmy was right again, pal. Yep. Uh-huh. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. It could have been could have been building up to a big match against Jay Cargill at SummerSlam. Could have been building up to a big match against Rhea Ripley for the women's title at SummerSlam, pal. A big main event of a stadium show in Berlin. But forget that. I want to wrestle Ruby Soho and Collision, pal. Come on. There you go. Yeah. So Sasha Banks' legacy. Let's talk about her overall legacy. Yep. Her legacy is the NXT run with Bailey. Her association with the four horse women. And the WrestleMania 37 main event. Mm -hmm. Those are her lasting footprints on the wrestling world. And she's one of the most influential characters, I think, of modern wrestling. Because overall, you know, from a women's perspective, she could be one of the most influential women, if not the most influential women in WWE history. It's, it's debatable. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, she's, uh, she's a top, you know, a top tier star of the mid 2010s, the PG era. She is one of the, the more recognizable characters. Probably one of the eight or nine most recognizable characters. 
uh, of the height of the PG era from like 2015 to 2021. Yeah. You know, she's up there with like the Shield and AJ Styles and you know, whoever else you want to throw in there. I, I would I would argue, you know. Um in terms like in ring, yeah, I don't, I don't know if she's like the greatest in ring worker, but her influence and her, what she what she's meant to the culture I, that that's her legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, I'll just sort of race say because I agree with everything you just said there. I'll just race say to wrap a bow on this. Sort of, I said about half an hour ago. Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet got us from the Funkadactyls being like the representation of women of color in wrestling, where they're just dancing with pom poms as complete sideshow acts, to women main eventing WrestleMania and. Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and their main event that they're going to have next year. Like, the Sasha Banks was what got us from point A to point B in that regard. And everything that encompassed Sasha Banks is what got us from point A to point B, which is massive in the context of, I mean, how women are seen. And I guess going forward for the next few decades, how women are presented. I mean, I no doubt there are you know, yeah, young girls, regardless of skin color, who watched Sasha Banks the last 10 years and gone, I want to be that. That's what I want to be now. Like, I, I can see that I won't just be... No, the, the, the funk of because I want not just be Cameron dancing with pom poms, pal. Uh, I'm gonna be coming out looking like a megastar in big WrestleMania spots, having these big moments. Stadiums full of people are gonna be there cheering me. Like I want to do that. So that to me is Sasha Banks, and that's like her ultimate legacy. Uh, beyond beneath all the other stuff that you mentioned, the wrestling and like her like specific moments and all the creative differences at certain stages. Like beneath all that, that's her like big like you know, top of the, I guess, the iceberg, you know, le- legacy, pal. Um, yeah. Yeah, pal, you yeah. ready to go around the world? It's been a while. I am, pal. Um, This will be a li- little bit of a shortened one. Um, one, I'm so- sort of short on time, but two, pal. Around the around world. Around the world. Around the world. Around the world, pal. Today, it's Super Bowl Sunday, yes, pal. Yes, yes. Pal, we're recording this a few, well, right, six, seven Four hours. hours Four hours before the game kicks off. Four and a half. Yeah. So in this time, in about seven, eight hours, we're going to be watching. Mahomes will be a three-time Super Bowl champion, yep. crying with the Lombardi power. You're going to have Travis Kelsey with his scripted proposal to Taylor Swift power to get yep. on all these mainstream outlets. Pal is written in the stars. Kevin, are you excited to watch what I just said? Oh, I, I pal, I am just over the moon, pal. No, it, it all, in all seriousness. Uh, this is the least interested that I've been. I'm not even exaggerating when I say this. This is the least interested I've been in a Super Bowl in my entire life, from what I can remember. I woke up this morning and I was like, "Oh yeah," I was getting these notifications like, "Oh, bet on the big game, pal." And I was like, "Oh, I forgot the Super Bowl was even going on." Like I've just, I'm so checked out. Um, I, I, wait, this is, one. This is a rematch of 2020. We've been there, done that with the Niners and the Chiefs. Um. I, I don't like the 49ers. I'm a Giants fan, so I don't like the 49ers at all. Um, and then three, the, the whole Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift thing has just overshadowed the Super Bowl. It's overshadowed the NFL. Now the NFL is full-on entertainment. Uh, the NFL is rigged. The NFL is scripted. All that narrative is at an all-time high. Like The NFL is just in an interesting place right now. Like the, Lamar Jackson and the... And, then the Ravens were like supposed to be the savior, pal. But then mm. they they couldn't get the job done against the, yeah. the Chiefs. They got they got defeated by the Chiefs like fifth string wide receivers, pal. Like it's it's yeah. just we've got Chiefs wide receivers going on Instagram live, just going crazy. It, it feels like WWE, literally. That this guy Kadarius Tony, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he sucks. He was on the Giants. The Giants traded him. Everybody's like, oh my god, how could they trade him? He sucks, bro. Watch, you'll see how great he is on the Chiefs. I've been watching him for two years. Let, let me know how great he is. Then he's dropping passes in big games, costing them games. Now the joke on Twitter is like, oh, Kadarius Tony out. That's a big blow to the other team. Says Kadarius Tony's not going to be on the field. Like, yeah. So he's going on Instagram Live, airing his creative differences with the head coach of the Chiefs and, and, the, and the front office. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I wish I was. He's literally like... Oh, I went into the GM's desk and the guy told me that I can't play, that I suck. And wow. I was like, nah, bro, I'm good. Trade me. And wow. it, like, this is what's going on. Just, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, you know what show out there in, uh, in NFL land. Go ahead. 
I, was like, I love how you phrase that whole thing. Well, it's Chiefs and 49ers. It, it's a rematch. We've been there. It's, it's like wrestling analysis. It's a rematch. <laughs> Saying that, don't care. Yeah, That's literally. Great. Literally. The pal, I just love the, like the Detroit Lions are like the biggest baby face in the NFL, pal. Yes. But everyone wanted to see them win. I yep. love their coach. He's just like a he's a coach. Yes. Like that that and everything that that team embodied. Of course, that the, they just get done over with like bad calls and they blow the lead. And now we're watching Brock Purdy in the 49ers, pal. As if anyone wants to watch Brock Purdy, you know, I, at least when like I'd you know, previous years of the Super Bowl, even if I'm not the biggest NFL guy, I'm like, oh, watching Tom Brady face the Rams, which that Super Bowl sucked, by the way. That was an awful Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, very bad. When it, was, it was three all or whatever after three quarters. I'm like, this sucks. Like, what is this? And then Tom Brady's defense carried him to another Super Bowl. But anyway, that's a whole separate situation. And then there was the one where yeah, Mahomes had a meltdown in the COVID year when, yeah, the, the Buccaneers just beat the, the, you know, the Chiefs. But anyway, so we're going to watch this Super Bowl today, pal. And the Chiefs are just going to win. And it's like, okay, cool, great. Oh, but the 49ers put a good fight up, pal, with Mahomes. He's won another one. It's like, cool. Like, I like Patrick Mahomes. I, I do, he's too. Like one, one, he's one of the more likable, like, star athletes in the world. You know, there's nothing about him yet with tax fraud. There's no big dramas with him. There's no allegations. Can I, can no I, can I interject? Can I interject? Yeah. Are you aware of his family drama? No. Are you, are you aware of any of it? So no. his his entire family is like a burning building. Oh, didn't his dad get arrested? His dad got arrested. Like, yes, his dad oh got arrested God. for a third DUI. Um, his wife has had a ton of stuff on the internet about her. I don't. I'm not even going to mention any of that. Um, his brother Jackson Mahomes has a ton of stuff on the internet about him. Allegations, litigations, lawsuits. He's like the Vincent Kennedy McMahon of TikTok stars. I'll let you do with that analogy if you will. Um, so yeah, uh, his family is like burning bridges, and he's just like the Steph Curry of the NFL. Everybody loves him. He's a great guy. It's amazing that he's he hasn't had any of that rub off on him. No. So good for him. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That's. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, pal. We'll, we'll do another discussion around the world next week. Um, but that being said, pal, I think we're ready to get out of here. Yeah, I'm, go. I'm good and ready. That was a great episode. Uh, peace. Peace.